After a two-year decline in rent costs and a statewide freeze on evictions, New York landlords have been wanting to get back to the way things were, meaning arbitrarily raising rents on tenants and evicting people with no good reason. Landlords have already made good on their promise to raise rents, and now with the eviction moratorium having expired, hundreds of thousands of renters face the looming threat of evictions. In response to this crisis, State Senator Julia Salazar introduced the Good Cause Evictions Bill, a bill which, if passed, would not only protect tenants from evictions, but provide new protections from predatory landlords. We spoke to Senator Salazar about how this legislation could put power back in the hands of millions of New York renters. So, I'm sure a lot of people out there have heard generally about New York, about how expensive the state is, uh, specifically real estate. But for people who don't live here, can you summarize specifically how bad the housing crisis is in New York? Yeah, in, in New York, across the state actually, but especially in the cities and especially in New York City, uh, most tenants, if not uh, at least 42% of tenants are rent burdened, meaning they pay at least 30% of their income every month in rent. Um, that's nearly a third of everything that a family earns, right, every single month going toward rent. Um, it's really a severe economic burden on working families across the city, across the state, um, and in some cities, like the city of Rochester, or in certain areas, um, like in the borough of the Bronx, at least 60% of people are rent burdened or even severely rent burdened. So you've introduced a bill called, called the Good Cause Evictions Bill, uh, which basically says a landlord needs a good cause to evict someone. So uh, can you tell us what does the law currently say about when a landlord can evict and what will this bill do to change that? For tenants, and it's the majority of tenants across New York City, across the state, who do not live in rent regulated housing. They have very little protection at all, virtually no protections from eviction if they don't have a lease or at the, at the end of their lease when their lease expires. They also don't have um, any protections under the law from a rent increase of any kind. So for most tenants, if their landlord, um, if they don't have a lease or at the end of their lease wanted to increase their rent by 100%, 200%. There is nothing in the law that prevents them from doing that, which of course is a, a de facto eviction for most tenants. So I read through some of the testimony opposing the good cause evictions bill, and you know it's a lot of landlords, and they're saying quite a lot. Uh, one of the things they're saying is that the bill is radically shifting the power dynamic uh, which between the landlord and the tenant, which they say was previously fair and is now radically shifting in favor of the tenant. Uh, another claim is that this bill would make it, and I quote here, more difficult, not easier for tenants to find a place to live. What's your response? What the bill actually does is it would provide some stability in the housing market where right now in New York City and, and actually places all over New York State, rents are rising at an unsustainable rate and there is nothing preventing that from happening. Um, and it makes it even harder for people to find housing because there is just less and less housing that people can afford. It's not as though incomes are rising at the same rate um, or there is sufficient assistance for people to be able to afford their rents. You know, I think that it's a good thing that we would change the power dynamic between tenants and, and landlords and property owners. It is undeniable that property owners, landlords, they have the power in, uh, in the relationship between a landlord and a tenant. And certainly that's, that's especially the case for unregulated tenants. But ultimately, tenants are paying the rent every single month and they don't own property. They're not building equity as they pay rent. Um, and ultimately, under current law, they don't have any protections from being displaced. So it's, it's obvious to me that landlords have uh, the advantage in this situation. And I think it's a good thing that we would try to um, make the power balance more equitable. The real estate lobby is, is massive. Um, there are these organizations that exist to advocate for the 
private interests of particularly corporate landlords, but the real estate industry as a whole. Um, tenants, of course, do not have that same lobby advocating for them. It's very well funded. And the influence that they have is largely through political donations to elected officials. Many elected officials, myself included, do not accept any donations from the real estate industry for precisely this reason. Because if, as an elected official, you are accepting um, a lot of money from the real estate industry, I think it's likely that it's going to influence your decisions and your policy making. Um, and we, we know that that's been true for you know, many, many years. Uh, the real estate industry has really dominated New York state politics. And it shows through time after time, every single legislative session, legislation passing that favors landlords over tenants. We really desperately need more social housing, housing that is not developed for profit, but that is designed and invested in with the sole purpose of providing safe housing for people that they can afford. Um, but I think until that happens, and then as long as we continue to fail to regulate the housing market, we are going to continue to see this enormous number of people who are rent burdened and people who simply can't afford housing at all.